Hello all, this is Halloween. And if you love Halloween and costumes as much as I do, as well as creating, you may want to subscribe because I'm going to be showing you how to make some awesome costumes without breaking the bank. Maybe even using some items, maybe even, maybe even using some items you already have at home. In today's episode, we will be recreating the Wicked Witch of the West from the beloved classic film, The Wizard of Oz. Let's get started. Here is what I'll be using to create the Wicked Witch of the West. Now, some of this came from the thrift store. I have a long skirt that I bought at the thrift store. I think it was like 10 bucks, but it was brand new with the tags. So it was a great find. Not that I'm gonna use it for anything else, but I might. I got this black corset that laces up the front, and I got that off of Amazon. I got this, it's kind of a short shirt, but it's very large, but I loved the sleeves. I got this from a consignment store, and it was half off, so it was only $6. And I'm just using it for the sleeves. I have a regular black long sleeve shirt, and then I have this kind of witchy looking collar that I bought off of Amazon. That's really cute. I'll probably wear this regularly. <laughs> so again, I bought some things that I like to wear anyway, so it wasn't like it was a total loss. I have the hat that I'm going to wear here, which I bought from Spirit Halloween when everything went on sale after Halloween. So it was half off or 75% off or whatever for the hat. These are great. Uh, these are actually shoes that I already had, but I bought these sort of witch shoe covers, which I think they look pretty cool. I just wanted to try them. It would be a really good alternative to if you're not wanting to pay full price for shoes or even go to a thrift store and buy shoes. They were only like five bucks, I think, on Amazon. And it's a really good alternative for that. So this looks like a lot of pieces and it is, but we're gonna go ahead and get started creating this look. Here is our completed costume, and if I do say so myself, it turned out pretty amazing. This is an almost completely thrifted costume, or brought together from items I already had. So this is what the channel is all about. All that I bought for this costume was the corset, the collar, and the shoe covers, and the hat and everything else I either thrifted or I already had it at home. So it was not costly. The broom was just made out of PVC pipe and it's a pretty outstanding broom, but it had to be, you know, it's a magic broom for a witch. So it's kind of crazy looking, but this is not your typical broom. We fly on this. Let's get started with our makeup. Yes, once again, it is makeup time. So we're going to be doing the Wicked Witch of the West. 
Of course, first we're going to apply our prosthetics with the Crayola Model Magic. And today I'm going to use this green that I got from Miron. I haven't used it yet, but I kind of bought it just, I just chose a random color because I wanted to try the liquid makeup. I think if I'm not mistaken, we may have tried some liquid makeup before, but uh, I went for it and bought the big bottle. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to use this, this green for the wedge today. And if I need to highlight, I've got some white, but I also have some Frankenstein green from Ben Nye, uh, the aqua colors. And I'll, I might be using that. And just a regular Ulta, the Ulta Beauty palette I always use. You literally do not need to, to buy a bunch of palettes. Uh, if you have like one good one with a bunch of different good colors in it, I mean, you can use it for a long, long time. And I use this one a lot. So let's go ahead and get started with this. So for the Crayola Model Magic pieces, you just take out a piece. We're going to extend the chin and the nose. Just something that looks like it's going to be big enough. So I just ripped off a piece. And all I do, and I hope this one's not too dry. Sometimes they'll dry up on you a little bit. I try to keep them tightly in the package. Like I'll wrap them in, with a rubber band or whatever. But sometimes they'll start to dry out and then you can't get that good rip. You know, it's still very thick. So this one's ripping very thick. I might have to get one of my other ones that's a little more moist and I have some right here it's white but that's okay we're gonna be painting it so this one's ripping better and for this I'm just going to extend the chin because she has a very pointed chin. And once I have it where I want it, and all I'm just doing is, you know, molding it with my fingers, not really doing anything crazy. Just like if you were going to make something out of the clay. It's just you're making pieces for your face. So you're gonna wanna keep putting it up to your face, kinda getting a feel for what it looks like on. And you're going to make those end pieces as thin as you possibly can because you're going to want it to blend when you put your liquid latex on and everything. And the thinner you make the edges, the better it's going to blend. It doesn't really necessarily matter if it what it looks like, just as long as it's really nice and thin. That looks good. It's more pointed. It's not crazy, but it's more pointed. And uh, that looks pretty good. Now, when I have my chin on, I'm just going to make a, a mole and hot glue it onto the piece. Once it's kind of, you know, fixed onto my face. And that doesn't hurt because <laughs> you have the clay that protects you. <laughs> so what you want to do is you're going to apply your spirit gum pretty liberally. I had a dilemma with my spirit gum adhesive and the lid was glued on by the spirit gum. If that ever happens to you, all you have to do is boil some water and dip the bottle upside down so that the uh, the spirit gum can melt, you know, and then you'll be able to take it right off. Just a little hint for you, just a little tip, pearls of wisdom. I wanted to use my good spirit gum because I'm doing prosthetics. I have the other ones that are like kind of generic that come with the latex pieces that you buy. But when I'm doing these pieces, I want something a little more heavy duty 
And I think that either the Ben Nye or the Mayron uh, spirit gum is a little stronger than what you get in those packages. What's gonna really suck is that it's like 150 degrees outside here in Florida. And this costume, you know, there's a lot to it. It's gonna be hot taking pictures. <laughs> it's got kind of little craters in it. I don't mind that. That kind of looks witchy, so. I'm just getting it pressed on. There's the chin. And now I'm gonna work on the nose. What a great movie, The Wizard of Oz. So many characters to choose from, but you know, you can totally go as a group costume. I don't even have to explain it to you. In fact, you've probably seen it done many times. A group will go out and there'll be a Dorothy and a Tin Man and, and all of this. So, I mean, there's so many characters. Even the Great Oz, <laughs> the Good Witch, which I think I may do at some point. I'll probably end up doing a lot of the characters from The Wizard of Oz. This is not going to be the last one. <laughs> just it's such a classic film. So now I'm doing the nose. It's just going to be more witchy looking than my nose. A little longer with the arch and everything. Witchy, you know? And I just have it in my fingers and I'm just molding it. There's really nothing to it. Um, nothing really too much to show. You're just taking it and molding it to your face however you want it to look. Now, for the nose, I mean, and I'm not being mean or anything, but if you already have a nose, that's kind of like, I, get, I think they call it a beak, a beaked nose. I mean, just do your regular nose. I mean, Margaret Hamilton had kind of a beaked nose. She was like the perfect, she had the perfect face uh, for this character. Same with the lady that played the nun in the Conjuring franchise. She had a wicked nose too, you know? Sometimes you just can work with what you got, if you know what I mean. You don't have to do all this. So let's see, I'm just making my edges really thin. And it's, look, it's not like symmetrical or anything. And neither are the pieces when you buy them online. They're gonna look a lot like this too. Just you want those edges really thin so they'll blend in. We have some great wind outside today. I hope it keeps up until I get the costume on. Cause that'll be great for, for the witch. Every time I'm doing a witch, it seems to be very windy outside, which is awesome which is awesome. So here's where we're getting into more of the prosthetics and effects makeup and, and things like that. I will be doing more costumes that require a little bit more coming up here. As we inch closer to Halloween, I'm gonna try and have some more, I don't wanna say complicated, but more cool, cool stuff. Cause it's really like, as you can see, it's not really complicated to make these pieces. And it's so much cheaper than buying one that's already made online. It's a lot cheaper. This package cost me like four bucks. It's three something with tax, so it comes out to like four bucks. And you can use it for several different costumes. You know, it'll last you for a while. When I'm doing prosthetics, I usually get what's closest to my skin, skin tone, or I will use what's closest to my skin tone. You don't wanna be getting like Unless you're going to be a blue character or something, you don't want to get like colors because it's just more that you'll have to cover. You want to get like white or, you know, flesh tone, something that will be easy to, to cover. Kind of press it down. Once you have it down and glued to your nose, you can kind of manipulate it any way you want. That's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to just make a quick little ball for a mole and I'm gonna glue that on. But my hot glue gun's in the other room. So when I come back, I'll have a mole. And it goes on the right side. So we go on right here. Oh, it's kind of sticking. I wonder if it'll stick. I may not need to hot glue it. I think it might stick. Hard to see in this lighting, isn't it? I'm gonna see. Oh yeah. Uh, we wanna do a little liquid latex. 
to blend these pieces. So I'm just going to apply with my finger today. When you apply your liquid latex, you're gonna to wanna to get it on. Oh, it'll choke you out, the smell of it is so strong. But you wanna get it on really quickly because it dries very fast. So just get it on there as quick as you can. It's blending very nicely because I went very thin on my edges. So we're just gonna wait for that to dry and then we're gonna do the rest of our makeup, which is actually very easy. She's very one note. I was noticing so we might be a little more contoury with her because she was just green just flat green you know not really a lot of highlighting or anything like that so we might do a little bit of highlighting and stuff but let me let this dry and I'll be back with you in a second I'm just getting my neck this stuff's pretty good I had decided to use my own hair because it, it looked better, more witchy than that wig did. The wig was really pretty hair. And I wanted it to look a little more nappy. <laughs> and when you put that, that hairspray stuff in your hair, it's nappy. So I, that's a little more witchy to me than like beautiful <laughs> brown locks. So we're going to start painting here over our pieces, I think. If I'm not mistaken, I remember reading that Margaret Hamilton actually got sick from her makeup too on set. And she burned herself really bad, but I think I told that story in my Tin Man video. Like she burned herself really bad. It was in one of the scenes where the poof would come up. Well, it was like real fire and she got badly burned. She had green lips and everything. So I am doing my lips. Blotting it on, I found kind of covers a little bit better than smearing it on. Even with my Ben Nye. I'm gonna pour some into this. Have some little containers around so you can kind of pour your stuff out. It's like, ugh, there's cat hair stuck to the latex. If you have cats, you know the struggle. I clean cat hair up all the time and it's still, still everywhere. Oh yeah. Now I'm just greening myself. That's it. So we're just going to finish covering, uh, greening our face. And then we'll go to the next step. What do you think? If you're having trouble applying the makeup in areas where you've applied the latex, because it's, it dries like plastic and it's real kind of slick. And sometimes the makeup doesn't want to stick to it. So in that case, you're just going to apply some translucent powder. Ben Nye makes it. You can even use a regular face powder, air spun, whatever you have around. And it will make the slippery part kind of more tacky because it's a powder. And that way you'll be able to paint, uh, paint over that spot. Because that's what was happening to the side here <laughs> of my nose. And it just kept not covering and opening up. And then when I put the powder, it covers very nicely. So I had to do the same thing to some parts of my chin. Right here, I'm still having problems. But I'm just gonna apply a little of the powder so that I can get it nice and tacky and the, the makeup will stick better. It covers pretty well though. This is Mayron liquid makeup. I can't stand when I buy makeup and it's just not covering at all. Oh, I've had that happen. Even with some Ben Nye. You know, I think after it sits for a while, it just, the pigment kind of weakens in it. I'm just gonna put some on my ears because our ears probably will be showing. And this one's pretty much done. I'll go back over this part, right here where I put the powder. Still being kind of a pain in the rear end. I don't know why. Well, I'll keep doing it until it covers right. Maybe I need more powder. More. More is more. I'll just go over it. I'll do my eyes and I'll go back over it. So with the eyes, she has kind of a sunken in, you know, a witchy look to her. 
I'm going to do a black liner on my waterline. Get this bigger one, because I do want it a little smudgy, like that. This is the L'Oreal pencil, the really big fat ones they make, which are nice. Yeah, you see this latex, it's not wanting to paint over the latex for some reason. It did it on my nose. And then now it's giving me issues. But it happens and you just gotta keep working at it and it'll happen for you. I may even be able to go over it with some eyeshadow because that's a powder that'll probably cover it. But now I'm gonna do some eyeshadow over my eyes. And I'm gonna go with like a gray color. Just this, uh, it's just like a thunder gray. I'm gonna go over my eyes with that. And then I'm gonna actually do my eyebrows last. And I will be putting on some mascara. And you go under too, over and under. Very easy makeup. Oh, what a world. Oh, what a world. This is going to start coming together when the brows are done. You'll see. What do you think about this new depiction of, of the witch? Like, she's really pretty, right? Like, they have a new one. I think it's Ariana Grande. And I don't know who all the actors are, but the actress that plays the Wicked Witch of the West. She's kind of too pretty. <laughs> to me, like, she's a witch for heaven's sakes. She ain't supposed to be pretty like that. That's what we're doing like that. Kind of bushy, unkempt. That is the Wicked Witch of the West. We're getting there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some mascara. And I'm gonna get some green eyeshadow. And I think that's gonna work to cover this little bit of latex I have left to cover. The wind had stopped and it picked back up again. <laughs> I put eyeshadow on it and it covered. Now I'm gonna just blot over it with the, the paint and that's working. So eyeshadow and then paint and that works great. It needs to be something that's gonna be powder based to rough it up a little bit so that it'll cover. All right, great. That's awesome. So like I said, she was kind of one note, so I'm just gonna add in cheekbones and stuff. Uh, she's pretty much just all green. It's gonna get in here with some black eyeshadow from my Tamix Revolution palette and just give her some cheekbones because it's awesome. I'll go to put my blush on tomorrow for work <laughs> it'll still have black in it because <laughs> I'll forget to clean it like oh no <laughs> it happens all the time yes I only have one blush brush I do not have a lot of makeup stuff I have a lot of makeup but I don't have like all the different brushes and all that stuff I have my blush brush and I did finally buy some um, shadow brushes but I couldn't tell you what the differences are or what numbers they are or whatever. It's just, it's a makeup brush. That's all I know. My mascara. Right, that's it. Now I just gotta get dressed and green my hands. All dressed up and ready for photos. I'll get you my pretty and your little dog too.
Thank you so much for joining me again today. I hope you loved today's look. It's a classic. And of course, there are so many different ways you can go for group costumes, couples costumes. Really, the options are, are endless when you have a classic like The Wizard of Oz. And this costume was basically all thrifted or I had the stuff at home already to create it. So that made it even better. And in my opinion, it's one of my best costumes this year so far. Leave a comment down below. Which character from The Wizard of Oz should I do next? If you had a choice, because I'm probably going to be doing a lot of them. <laughs> if you love today's episode, there's going to be many more as we get closer to Halloween and a lot of really cool ideas. So if you haven't already, please remember to like, subscribe, and share the video, and I'll see you next time.